Hi everyone and welcome to episode 74 of SAMA, a program which invites an expert to talk about their area of expertise. This week we are delighted to have Steve Ozilich as our guest expert. The subject for today, TMS, Permanent Healing from Disease and Pain. Steve is a mind, body, health consultant and author of the two-time International Book Award honoree, The Great Pain Deception. He's also authored Dr. John Sarno's Top 10 Healing Discoveries and a book about pain treatment. And we'll be covering those through the seminar. Now, Steve has combined his own research and the experience with the work of John Sarno with both his uh, research studies and the books that he's authored. For 18 years, Steve has helped reach tens of thousands of people how to heal themselves through his lectures, books, articles, and interviews. Today, he will teach us some of those techniques. So welcome to our show, Steve. It's fantastic to have you with us. Thank you, John. It's fun to be here. We'll go right into the deep end. What is TMS? Okay, good question. Sometimes I think it means too much Steve, but <laughs> actually a, an acronym that stands for the mind-body syndrome. And it was discovered by a brilliant physician in New York at NYU, uh, probably the late 1970s. Uh, he noticed early on that his back pain patients had other health problems as well. He went and looked at their records. They had all kinds of things. It usually just wasn't one thing that the person had. It was usually multiple things. He started talking to these people, and he noted, wow, they have a certain type of personality, a certain personality of a, a, a goodest or a, a, a driven person, a very hard-driven person to the point of perfectionism. And so um, he created an acronym for it at the time. It was called Tension Myositis Syndrome. Now, I had... 30 years of intense back pain. Yes. I, tr I tried everything. I mean, you name it. Uh, if it was there, I tried it. Even hanging upside down like a bat at yes. one point. <laughs> yes. And I, at, in the late 1990s, it got very bad. I, I was almost dead from it. I had lost 54 pounds. I was crawling around on my hands and knees. I quit eating. And I was just fading away at that point. And I was wow. introduced to his work on TMS. And I thought he was insane. I thought he was crazy. <laughs> I well, rejected Well, it's actually a, quite a beautiful mindset, isn't it, where you're being told not to be a perfectionist. You can actually be yourself. Sorry, I'm stealing your thumbs here. <laughs> I mean, it's true. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy at some point. But um, I didn't believe him at first. But then as I got worse, I started looking into his work. And the, his book was called Healing Back Pain. And um, I ended up healing. Forever, it's, I've been 18 years free now because of what he had discovered in his practice in New York, and that's why I wrote my three books on on. It's his work; it's not my work. I'm just a messenger boy here, delivering a message to China tonight, and uh, it works. It works virtually every single time without any drugs, medication, techniques, tricks, tips, programs, or anything. And, and because because of why it happens why he discovered why pain is you know not not how to get rid of it but why so instead of dealing with the effect which is the pain he dealt with the cause which yes. was from the, from the mind right the mind. and so and but we know we need both we have to still deal with the effects sometimes the best example is an ulcer you know an ulcer is a mind body effect it's from stress it's not from a bad stomach. It, they come, that's, that's way past that understanding. You know, it's part of TMS. But if we don't deal with it, the symptom, the effect, you can die. And so it's very important that we do have medicine at some point, you know, to deal with effects. We do need to relieve suffering in people because there's too many people suffering in this world. But when it comes down to it, the people that are causing the suffering, that are causing the epidemics of symptoms are the doctors. And needless to say, they didn't like Dr. Sarno very much. 
Okay. He passed away a couple of years ago. Well, it was about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. Okay. But he left a world legacy that transformed this planet and, w- and whatever planet you're on there transformed that planet too. And I'm here just to explain it. Okay. So he found out that a certain um, personality type made people more susceptible to their back pain. And there are people that tended to be goal driven, I guess, perfectionists like yourself. Well, Almost everybody experiences back pain at one point in, yes. in their life. It doesn't matter what the personality is. He just noted in a specific personality type, they had constant back pain and severe back pain. Yes. And there's also a heart personality that Rosamund and Friedman discovered in the 1959, I think it was, yes. called the type A personality, right? They have heart problems. And there's a type C cancer personality that Lawrence LaShawn discovered in 1964. And so really, when it comes down to it, the physical health problems that we have are not from body problems. It is not the body. It's a personality thing at some point. It, it, what happens in the mind because of the way the child learned to develop within the family mm-hmm. dynamic. But the problem, as you probably know, is that the medical industry only treats the symptoms, you know, and there, there are cures for everything all around. And they're, they're not that interested because the, the money is made in the treating of disease, not in the healing of disease. The thing, the problem that um, I share with many other people is the fact that when you take a painkiller, it's blocking off the path, the communication line between your body and your brain. And so you're saying that there's a way that you can train your way of thinking, alter your personality in a way or try and mold things so you don't get the pain in the face. That's a good question. Why don't you ask me that one? <laughs> That's pretty good. He, he said early on, you know, you don't, you don't need to change your personality. You know, who can, really, at some point? We can alter it, I suppose, a little bit. But he, he was amazed to discover that when he began explaining to the, his patients that you don't have a bad knee or shoulder or hip or back or whatever it is, you know, that you have unconscious processes going on behind the scenes that you're not aware of. Yes. That are that, are, that reach a certain threshold level when they begin to overwhelm you in your life and th- begin to threaten you actually at some point that your brain simply creates this, the pain or the illness as a diversion. And so that now you have to be riveted to your body in obsessive focus and this type personality type, we call a type T person for tension. They're, they're borderline OCD. No, they, they, they tend to obsess and focus on certain things. And so everybody gets it. Everyone in the world has TMS at some point. I have no doubt that your sciatica was too. I have no doubt about it. Because I've never seen a case of sciatica that wasn't TMS yet. But So whatever is going on in your life, we're, we're not aware of it. We, we have no idea because it's repressed. And so we're walking around with unable to lift our shoulders and put our weight on our legs and backs and things like that and skin problems. And even gets worse at some time, you know, cancers and multiple sclerosis and things like that they are really ultimately problems with you know the the balance of energy in the body but at some point they are all initiated by the conflict in the mind that's what he discovered yes we do have chemical imbalances yes we do have this in this and this and this but those aren't the causes they're the effects of the conflict and so what he discovered there was revolutionary it's a psychological conflict in the mind that causes almost all of our health problems. I haven't seen anything yet that hasn't been healed from TMS with, with this knowledge that, that he discovered. And so ultimately, get the mind straight, and then there's no more conflict, and then there's no more anger and fear, and there's no more need to divert it to the body constantly. And so there's no more need to treat the body, the physical body at some point. So he went right to the, the origin of it. And I can tell you, and if anybody's listening, <laughs> that um, it works virtually every single time and that almost nobody believes it. That's the tragedy. That's the tragedy right there. So what you're saying is, it's the way of the body to divert <clears throat> its own attention to some issue in a thought process to something physical in your body so that your attention then gets drawn to that. 
So right. and I think I think uh, the yogis have known this for thousands of years when they talk about the body, the physical body, the emotions in the body. They are simply mere reflections of what's going on in the mind. And so pain and disease are reflections of what's going on in the mind. You know, it's, it resides on the surface of the body, and it takes a look at what's going outside and inside, and it's sending signals back to what's going on. But the problem is, is that these people, they feel a lot of fear. They're in fight flight all the time, that they're always in attack mode. And so the person's in constant fight flight all the time. And so the autonomic nervous system is trying like crazy to keep it balanced, but it can't do it. And so we get ulcers and tinnitus and ears and vision problems and ulcers and skin problems. And it's basically limitless. The brain has carte blanche over us to do whatever it wants. And I've had people tell me that they healed from late stage cancers with this information and at stage four and MS, the spots in the brain begin to disappear because once you begin to resolve the conflict, now the energy begins to balance in the body. Like it should be mind, body, spirit aligned in beautiful harmony. You know, bad health is disharmony. That's what it is. Or dis hyphen ease, right? I think that came from Quimby's work and, and uh, Mary Baker Eddy talked about it and, in Christian science, but dis hyphen ease. It's a dis ease, all of it. The body's just a report card. But unfortunately, we always think the body has fallen apart. Oh, my body gave me the disease. My body, I have a bad back, or my dad had bad knees, and that it's not true. We know from this work that it's not true. But once again, no one wants to believe it. And I can tell you why if you want to know. <laughs> yeah, cut <laughs> it. <laughs> um, it's a protective mechanism. Let's take the most common disorder in the world is back pain. That's the number, that, that is now the world's number one uh, epidemic, right? Um, that's energy. Ang it's coming from anger. And that's just energy that's being stored in there. But that energy and anger are coming from conflict. Conflict. Okay, so the brain's repressing that conflict, and the person's able to go on looking as though things are normal. They look happy, under control, but they've got neck pain, back pain. And so it's protecting them. That's what he discovered. It's a protective mechanism. And so it's protecting you from things that are dangerous. Some of those things are suicidal thoughts. Some of them things, you know, leaving my family or quitting my job, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. So why would you want to know about those things if it's protecting you? That's why they want to can always blame the body. What's my bad knee? It's, I need a new hip. I need a new knee. No, they don't. But they want to believe that. Because if you can blame it on something external like the body, then you don't have to take accountability for your life anymore. You don't have to say, I'm in the wrong marriage, or I, I don't love my job, or I hate myself, or whatever it is. You can just blame it on the body. It's the body, you know. Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen it be the body yet. I mean, when, you know, we're not talking about an accident. You know, somebody can fall and get injured and hurt themselves. You know, we're talking about chronicity here. But TMS also attacks acutely. I know in, I just did a consultation with a guy in Japan, and he was telling me about the phrase they have for that. When you have a back attack and you can't stand up, something like Jokuri Goshi. Jokuri Goshi. Everybody knows about it. You have an acute attack. You cannot stand up. But I'm telling you now, that is from an unconscious process psychological process someone's got a bad hip though and they have a replacement hip put in a um titanium hip then their hip um, then their their, their problems go what well, this is according to what they've been you know what they say they their hip is better then but then there's no more diversion for the mind so how well, well, there's something else to be up then. <laughs> good, good question. You know, it first reminds me of something Mark Twain said one time. All lies start with the words they said. <laughs> but what happens is he called it the symptom imperative phenomenon. It was his greatest observation. He should have won the Nobel Prize in medicine for this. And this is the way he used to phrase it. The brain will not be denied. In other words, you can get a new hip. I see it happen often several times a month, it'll go over to the other hip, you know, or you can get a disc operated on your back, it'll go to the disc above it, like Tiger Woods did four times, just keeps moving to different discs, because it's trying to divert your awareness, 
And so you can't stop it with surgery. You can't stop it with drugs, medication, anything like that. You can alleviate some symptoms for a while, but you're not going to stop it in the long run because, like he said, the brain will not be denied. And so we have to be careful. We see people get back surgery, and they get an ulcer very quickly after that because the surgery did nothing. And the brain just shifted it to somewhere else. That's why he called it the symptom imperative. The brain is looking to be constantly diverted. And, uh, of course, that should have won the Nobel Prize in medicine. And the good news is it works virtually every single time. But that was a good question. You know, you don't need a new hip. Your brain is attacking the arthritis in your hip or it's, it's attacking the uh, uh, rotator tuff, cuff tear or the meniscus tear in the knee or the arthritis like in my ankle. It attacked my ankle and I was on crutches. I couldn't walk on it. And my ankle has all kinds of arthritis in it. And so you would think that it was the arthritis causing it. No. The brain is attacking the changes in the body, like the herniated disc. It's attacking the arthritic hip. It's attacking the ankle and the tears in that. It's using them. It's not coming from them. And that is one of the greatest discoveries in medical history. Medical history. And um, once people accept them, this is the problem, though. They won't accept it. Oh, no. I saw my herniated disc, you know. But I've seen people whose herniated disc was broken off. They're fragmented. It, it's dropped down. No longer attached. They heal quickly. They heal quickly. Gosh. And so, now, there are some things you might need surgery on, of course. You know, nothing's that black and white, but... Uh, it's pretty, pretty white. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, there, there are some things, but very, very, very few things that actually need surgery, you know. And I see, I get the worst cases that you'll see because I'm not a doctor or I'm not a therapist either one. So they come to me last. <laughs> you, know, you know, I've tried everything. I'm coming to you last. And they still do very well. They still do very well. Wow. So. Just a reminder for our viewers, both on Facebook and the uh, viewers online, just ask questions either under the video that's live streaming on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. You're very quiet over in Facebook corner at the moment. And also in the chat or Q&A section of the... Um, they're of they're the in bed. Uh, yes, it is quite late in America, but there's other countries as well, and some of you will be uh, staying up. There's quite a high view count, so please ask questions. You may be wondering how to treat your own particular pain type and... Steve will have the answers for you. Now, um, it's, it's, it's actually intriguing what you're saying. I'd love to know, can anyone do this? Is it something, is it a skill that only a few people can achieve, acquire, or is it a skill which others... Every, everybody can heal, you know. The, the, the true healer is inside of us. And... What, what you're really seeking in healing is peace. That's all. The soul wants to be happy and enjoy and at rest and at peace. And so um, once the conflict in the mind is dissolved, and that sometimes that's just enough to know what's going on. He said he was mystified when he told some of his patients what was going on in their body, and they healed right there while he was talking to them. I, I've had people heal while I was Skyping with them or over dinner. You know, Gosh. they've tried for years. There's something about the awareness of what's going on that is the healing mechanism, just the awareness alone. Now, some people need more help, of course. If you have severe childhood emotional abandonment, sometimes you need therapy, you know, to try to deal with sure. those wounds. Sure. You know, because it's coming from conflict, and that conflict can be mild, you know, and all conflict is imagined at some point. It's imagined, the conflict. The pain is real. Yes. But the, the cause of the pain is imaginary. The conflict is almost never real because conflict comes from ego alone, all right? It's not my way or I want this or whatever. It's not how I see it. You know, that, that's where the conflict begins is with ego. And so ultimately, if you can get beyond that, anybody can heal them themselves. But, you know, some people need more help, you know? Sometimes I'll send somebody to a highly trained psychotherapist, one of Dr. Sarno's, because they're the best in the world, and uh, sometimes while I'm talking to them, heal. And sometimes, like me, it took me a couple years to heal from 30 years of back pain. About, about a year and a half, I would say. Because I was doing a bunch of things wrong. <laughs> and that's why I wrote the book, so that I could show people the mistakes that I made, you know. Yes, yes. So, so at some point, you're, the question, to answer that question, anybody can do this. Anybody. 
Okay, well, a question's come pouring in. <laughs> Actually, three. Three, three yeah. come in. Um, yeah, hold, the, hold the presses. <laughs> they're, they're, they're from Facebook. So, yes, Facebook is awake. They're still arguing about how many time zones are in China. <laughs> No, that was in the chat session. Um, the the uh, Q and A part is where where the uh, Facebook questions come through. And there's three that have come through. Two from oh, sorry. Um, yes, um, one from Uriel Holland uh, Werger. Uh, I'm not sure what the question means, but I'll, I'll just forward it to you, Steve. Maybe you can make sense of it. Did you find out how to build direct connections between the spirits? Oh. We pass between that one or well i mean it's always in us of course and it's yes. always there it's just a matter of seeking it okay okay um lisa uh, Dennis. To answer that, yoga, meditation and yoga are the direct paths to pathways to it if, if that's what they're looking for and both of those um, things are quite well they are they can be done by anybody i think with patience yes. And, it's really, uh, it really comes down to stillness. The more mm -hmm. still you can make this thinking function, the more still it becomes, the more that spirit, that, that joy rises, the conflict ends, people start to smile again. But this, So this is the problem right here. It's the thinking process. Right. This is why ultim ultimately people like Eckhart Tolle are the, have the right path here, you know, to, trying to get the presence work, yes. mindfulness work presence where, where you're just being you're a human being we're not humans doing we're human beings and so we're always trying to figure it out well what about this what about that it, it's like the it's like the buddha's parable of the poison arrow you know uh they, they were asking him about god asking him, well, what should you do here what should you do there and he he said uh, a man was shot with a poison tip arrow in his leg and he said people ran over to pull the arrow out to help the man but the man said before you pull it out, I want to know who shot me. And I, I want to know where it came from. And I want to know why they shot me. And the point is that in the meantime, the man's dying. We're dying. You know, stop asking so many questions. You know, it's not about, it's not about finding more answers in life. It's about asking less questions. It's about living your life and enjoying your life. But for some reason, we've allowed to take, the brain to take over and it, we, we, we're, try, we're way ahead of ourselves. We're tripping over ourselves here instead of being present, enjoying your life, being blessed, and, and understanding how blessed we have been just to have this life. We're too busy trying to figure it out, which is why when people do the antidepressant, anti-anxiety drugs, you know, SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, it inhibits the next thought, right? It slows that synaptic response across there. And when you're not thinking so much, you feel so much better. Feel so much better, you know. Maybe that's, that's why, why I feel so great every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first thing we've learned from today's summer: just try and stop your thinking processes. Just keep that in mind. And not not altogether, <laughs> okay. but sometimes we have to think, right? But most of the time, we don't have to. We can just be in the moment, experiencing life. Right. Okay. Uh, Lisa Dennis has asked. Um, how do serious pathogens like inflicted, um, they were, they've been inflicted by tick, tick bites, um, how does that relate to the concept that the subconscious mind is the cause of health issues? Ooh, I like this question. Whoever asked that, thank that person. Lisa uh, This is one of the things Dr. Sarno discovered that was amazing. Um, and I, it was good to see that there was a medical doctor last year, I think it was in Florida, who, who had his medical license revoked because he had diagnosed too many Lyme's disease. Okay. <sighs> and it was good to see that because like Dr. Sarno discovered, because that antibody titer is in your bloodstream doesn't mean that Lyme's is causing the symptoms. Okay. It's there just like the, the ulcer bacterium. Almost everybody in the world has it in our stomach. The ulcer bacterium. Mm -hmm. Guess what? The only people that get the ulcer are the ones who are stressed out. So when we're stressed, the immune system plummets. And then these viruses, they take over. And so we have to keep our immune system strong. How do we do that? By being happy. Once again, stop trying to figure it out. Letting go, you know, let go. Forgive. Begin to live in the moment again. And so Deepak Chopra said one time, which I quoted him in my first book, that the immune system is merely a circulating nervous system. 
and, and he said neurobiologist friends of his agree with that. You know, it's a circulating nervous system. So once again, the T in TMS stands for tension. Tension comes from stress. It begins in the mind. Stress begins in the mind. And my favorite definition of stress is the, the Chinese one. <laughs> um, stress is the difference between what you wanted versus what you just got. You know, that gap. That's what stress is. So we don't get what I receive is much more and better than what I hoped for. <laughs> yeah. Well, ultimately, it always is if we look at it the way through it through the clear prism, right? But at some point, you know, if you don't set, you know, all this I want, I want, I want, I want, then we begin to feel a lot better. And then the stress in the mind turns into it's it's morphed into tension in the, body, in the physical body. Then you have all the autonomic disruptions. You know, sleeplessness, uh, ulcers, uh, digestive problems, blood flow, which is the cause of the back pain. Your brain is reducing the blood flow in your spine just a little bit, just a teeny little bit. It causes a horrific spasm, like a cramp. It's like a cramp is what it is. And it's doing that so that you have to focus on your body. You can't think of anything else. You can't think of all those emotions that are back here that you don't like and want. And so to answer her question, when... People, there is no such thing, like Dr. Sarno said, there's no such thing as chronic Lyme disease. You get bit by the tick, you get infected, you take the antibiotics, and it goes away. Now, if it doesn't go away, that's the TMS. The brain has taken opportunity of that to begin TMSing. It's a phrase that he created, TMSing. So anything that goes on chronic, and the TMS doctors will tell you they don't believe in chronic TMS. It's TMS. They don't, they don't believe in chronic lines, I mean, chronic okay. lines. Okay. And so that person, whoever that was, they need to go and take a look at the work and see if their brain has not fooled them into thinking that they have not healed yet, that it's taken advantage of that lines, you know. And so, you know, once again, take a look at the work. Take a look at this TMS work. It will change everybody's life here that's listening, all three of them. <laughs> The fourth one's come in, so you're, you're wrong, Steve. The fourth one's come in. A fourth one's come pouring in. But it's, uh, the third one is actually part of where I want the summit to go. And uh, it's a question from Linda Rice, and she's asking, how do you help people recover from trauma? So it's really down to the mechanics of pain. Yeah, that's... Oh. I was. I, you told me there. You promised there'd be no hard questions. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> I've got it's no good. burden. I've got no guilt. You know. I just, just. Oh, you know. I will answer that question in a roundabout way. You know, it took me ten years to write this, and on the last page of the book, I decided to summarize the book up in one word. Just one word. Guilt. Guilt. That's that's what's really causing the conflict in us at some point. But um, I'm not a trauma expert. I'm not a psychotherapist. I don't pretend to be one. Um, I did it in my way. I think it's a personal revelation inside people. Sometimes you need an expert if the trauma's bad. I just uploaded an amazing testimonial of a guy that healed. He was a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. Anybody can go watch it. It's, it's a TMS healing wall of victory on YouTube. His name's Matt Lyman. Matt Lyon. Matt Lyon. He is a chiropractor, and um, he nailed it. He stood there for 23 minutes in Jamaica and talked about TMS, how it saved his life. He had tried everything, too. But he had to go talk to a therapist. You know, deal. He had terrible trauma in his life as a child. His mother was killed, and his sister was killed, and things like that. And so how you deal with the trauma, I'm not sure. I, I just began to let go, began to enjoy my life again. Um, more meditation. Uh, Dr. Sarno speaks with something called a rage to soothe ratio, where you have to increase the, the soothing in your life, the pleasure in your life. But unfortunately, the personality type, it, it's always trying to better itself. It never enjoys life in the moment, which is another reason why Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, is such a powerful book. Right now, the poison arrow, right? The poison arrow. Right, right. Now, if, we, you're, if you're living in trauma, you're living in the past all the time. You're screening every day of your life through your ego, through the past. And if you can't let go of it, you will need a trained person. I, I, I don't do that work. 
But uh, that is a great question, by the way. In my life, I had trauma, which is why I had, I had, a, I had a paralyzed left leg. For nine months, I had to drag my one left leg around, had no more reflexes, foot drop, no more sensation. And of course, the whole time they were telling me that it was a pinched nerve in my back, and it never was, never was. It's like, once again, the medical industry is the thing that's killing us at this point. But I don't want to throw everybody under the bus because they also saved me. You know, and so some of them are doing amazing work out there. Transplant surgeons, of course, people like that. The TMS physicians, of course. But for the most part, they're keeping us sick. They're keeping us sick because they're, they're focusing on the effect and not the cause of it. And so I hope that answered that for that person, you know, because if they did have trauma in their life, you either have to let it go, let go of that attachment, uh, or find some help and learn about why you can't let it go. That's the important question. Why can't I let it go? It's an um, easy thing to say, just let something go, but it's so hard to do. Well said. I mean, that's true. It's, it's easy to say, you know, oh, I'll just get rid of it. Well, not, right. not so. But once again, it's the ego that won't let go of it. The ego means, as Wayne Dyer used to say, ego stands for edging God out. Edging God out, right? God is this moment right now. It's, it's always here, this beautiful, loving, giving moment. It's always here. But if you're always living in the past and can't let go and scream, you're never enjoying this beautiful moment that's right here. You're mm -hmm. hurting yourself here. If you let go of it, you'll find great joy in your life. And I quoted a statement from the Bhagavad Gita in there about my anger chapter. And it's, it's, it goes something like, uh, you are like one who is angry at another person and picks up a burning ember to throw at that person. You only burn yourself at this point. And so if you can't let go of the trauma, you're really just hurting yourself. And it's tragic because life is moving on day after day. And so depending on the trauma level, I guess, and your belief and how willing you are to let go, you know, sometimes people refuse to let go forever. And that's out of fear, of course, out of fear. Fear is the Fear is the most is the destructive force in our lives that causes our health problems. Fear, right? Which is the opposing state of love. Love and fear are on polar opposite ends of the spectrum. Here, their state love, heaven and love are states of awareness. They're not places. Okay, and so we've got fear, which is not seeing it right. There's tragedy. There's trauma there somewhere, and that's when disease and pain enters because we're not seeing it right. The body's energy gets all distorted, right? You know, we, we noticed, I was reading uh, some things that Candace Pert said before she died, and she said, you know, we found in, in the clinical studies that if the person is aware that the tumor in their body is anger, that they begin to shrink at some point. Oh, sure. you know, so, so we need to see more clearly. So the body is following the mind thought processes. There's a question that Charlotte puts forward, which is very interesting, I think. Um, Charlotte's, <coughs> sorry, I had to do that. Um, talking something about accidents. Have you heard people make statements like this job is breaking my back and then they have an accident or a back injury of some form in the back? Did I? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, <coughs> although I don't, want to get, I don't want to get caught into Charlotte's web here. <laughs> but uh, there are two things going on there in that question. One of them is, you know, consciousness and energy. If you look at the studies that they're doing now, they, they show these images of these people. They'll show like something beautiful, like a baby's face. And then they'll show like something scary really quickly. And they, they, they want the person to hit this button. They're watching the, the body react to the images. And they're watching the person tense up before the scary image even comes up. Oh. There's something going on in, in consciousness that we're not aware of. Sometimes it's ahead of us or behind us. I don't, I don't really understand it myself. But I do believe that accidents are not accidents, if that answers her question. That's something within this consciousness matrix that we live within that it's drawn to us. And sometimes it gets us out of doing certain things. And right. Louise Hay was the one who talked about this. You remember Louise Hay, the founder of Hay House Publishing? She, you can heal your life. She talks about the symbolism often in it. You know, I can't walk. My knees hurt. My neck hurts. The person's a pain in the neck. I see that a lot too. Amanda Wood, Wood <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Um, Amanda asks, how to treat chronic scoliosis and stenosis of the spine? That's very chronic where you've got the 
the um, the links of, the, of your back fusing together. And I, that's now that's an easy question. Is it? I thought it was going to be one of the hardest ones. No, that was easy. Scoliosis and stenosis do not cause pain. That's, that's simple. He proved that 50, 40 years ago. And I see people virtually every day. My own spine, no opening. Stenosis so bad, it looks like there's, the nerves are pinched coming out of there. That yeah. pain disappeared 20 years ago. People have scoliosis their whole lives, but no pain. And then suddenly, as adults, they get a back pain, and the doctor says, oh, it's because of the scoliosis. Yes. Well, why wasn't it there when you were younger? It's still crooked. What, remember what I said earlier? The brain will use those things. It will attack the scoliosis. It will attack spondylolisthesis, spondylolysis, all the herniated discs, all these things. It will attack those. Those aren't the causes, though. And the same thing with stenosis, too. And I talked about that in my third book, you know. The stenosis studies, they're showing that the more narrow that it is, the less pain the people are in. Gosh. It's bizarre, but, it, but it's true. Mm. So if she believes, if she believes that, or is that a he or she? I didn't guess that. Oh, she, yeah. She, if she believes that that is the cause of her pain, then it will never go away. That's the wrong perception. She has the wrong perception. Doctor probably told her that. There's nothing wrong with your body. It's, a, it's more of an autonomic nervous system thing at this point, you know. She needs to take a look at her life and say, you know, what's my personality like? Uh, you know, what's going on in my life right now, you know, and take a look at her health history. And if she can get to a good TMS doctor, of course, that helps too. But basically, we know without doubt, scoliosis and stenosis do not cause pain. It's amazing. Wow. Remember, I, remember, well, remember one of the first things I said to you was, nobody wants to believe it, right? Mm -hmm. it it's up to her if she wants to heal. Buy, buy Dr. Sarno's book, get my book, you know, get your magic wand. <laughs> 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 I still don't know what it does, but it looks intriguing. Um, Tony Hartman has asked a question through Facebook, and he's saying um, he's really wanting to confirm. Uh, you know, are you saying, Steve, that emotions and the mind contribute much to the pleomorphism of the bacteria and viruses, which then cause the illnesses? That's a yeah. bit one. The first time I ever heard that was when Dr. Weil was talking about that. You know, and he repeated it. You know, these things are not the causes, these pathogens or whatever. They're the effect. Right. Now, of course, then we've got things like Ebola. I mean, how do you explain Ebola, right? It attacks the body so quickly and destroys it that I don't, who knows what's going on there. Yeah. But yeah. I'm talking about general things. Why, did, why were the people able to walk around during the Black Plague of England, you know, and one third of them walking around the people never got it? What happened there? You know, I can only hypothesize that they were in a better state of mind, body, spirit, and maybe their their, their immune system was stronger. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't have all the answers. I'm saying pull the arrow out of your leg. <laughs> you know, stop looking for answers and just enjoy our lives at some point. But I know it's, it's hard to enjoy your life when you're suffering. I understand that. That's why I do this work. But that's a good question. If you boost your immune system, it's almost impervious to many, many things. Okay, well, we've talked about things of how to let go of things that are stressing you out and <clears throat> causing causing your your brain or giving your brain reason to give it a provided uh, diversion. But how do you go about it? There's people that are watching us now. There are one or two people, and they may have chronic pain in their back or elsewhere. What do they actually do? Like they they'd be told not to worry live for the moment but how it's it's easy words but hard to do because we're all not we're living in a modern world steve or you are or what we are too actually and um and we've got day-to-day -day stresses we know we're going we're going to you know jobs that most of us probably don't really enjoy but we go there for the money because another worry we have is the mortgage for the house or bills of of other types feeding the family and and health of family members, how do you really enjoy the moment when you're surrounded by the soup of worry? Right. And that's, that's why I mentioned that the real work is really the presence work, the mindfulness work. Yes. Um, pulling the arrow out of your leg and just going 
to live. But it's, it's about a false perception. Thich Nhat Hanh is a great Buddhist monk that I really admire. And he said, you know, we talk about nirvana in the East a lot. And in he- they, they call it heaven in the West, you know, same thing. He said, it's really about having a false perception, having the wrong views or having no views. Once you have no views anymore and you can see things clearly as they truly are, which actually is perfect, peace, a great peace, because you no longer have a conflict. You no longer take sides and stances. You no longer hate your job or your relationship and things like that. You no longer have an attitude about it. You're just being calm. You're living it. And so um, you can do, uh, I don't know if it surprises you or not, but the number one question asked of me for the last 18 years has always been, but what do I do? You know, that's, that's, the way we think, you know, we have to do something to get a certain outcome. We don't. All you have to do is shift, shift your perception and start to see it through the lens of gratitude and thankfulness, things like that. When you, when you see things through the lens of gratitude, everything begins to shift and change. And I can't remember who it was. It's been attributed to Max Planck, but uh, it was something like, uh, when you change the way you look at things, the way... The things you look at change. And that's true, we know, from the quantum field, you know, from the double slit experiment. We know, but our observing of it is the thing that collapses it down into matter, into a reality. It's our observing of it. The Buddha said, if a tree falls in a forest and there's no one there to hear it, it doesn't make a sound. And he said, it cannot, because there's no observer. There's no, there's no other receiver right on the other end. And so... It's how you see it. It's everything. It's everything. If you see your job as lousy, like you said there, or your relationship and all that, well, then guess what? It is lousy, and you will suffer because you're looking at it through the lens of misery, ego. You're looking at it through the lens of ego. It's not going the way I want it to go. You know, the word ego is a German word that means me or I. You know, I, I, me. It's not going how I want it to go. So when I work with people, I like to get them to switch this. Switch this notion of, I want, you know, which the Buddha said is the, is the cause of our suffering, is the desire for want. You know, I want a better job. I want a better mate. I want more money. I want to be younger. That's one of the biggies I see. I want to be younger, right? So it's, it's this notion of want, want, want is causing the suffering. Let's do the opposite. Let's switch that. So when I, when I work with people, I say, let's do the very opposite of the cause. The opposite of want is thank you. Thank you. You know, you and I are talking here. You know, we can see, we can hear, we can move, we can walk. You know, we're nobody in this world. Doesn't I don't know what what's going on in China there. <laughs> but here, there's a lot of people who live there. Yeah, but, I, I, uh, I can't keep track of everyone's names. I can tell you, there's there's two. <laughs> Have you counted them all? Pardon? Would you count them for me? <laughs> no, just one, just one no. moment. Uh, but there's one other in this room. <laughs> okay. Okay. So my point here is that um, so many people are on anti-anxiety, anti-depression medication, right? Because it's not going the way they want it to go. But guess what? Shift the way you look at it, and it will begin to go that way. You'll begin to see things are actually okay. But um, look, we, we have television. We see all these people having these beautiful lives, you know. Actually, Facebook is maybe one of the tough ones because everyone's always sending pictures of being happy on their vacation <laughs> and all that. And as soon as they sign off, well, they're going back to their miserable life, right? <laughs> and so you know, we call it superego in psychology or persona. Carl Jung referred to it as the persona, this face that we put onto the world. It's, it's not real. It's, it's, we're doing it for those people, everybody else out there. Yeah. And so when we, we can shift and see that peace inside of us, and that joy, and we start to see it through the lens of gratitude, the health problems begin to disappear quickly. I hope that answered that question. That does. It answers it in quite a good way, in a way Ooh. that even I could understand. Well, it's, it's really a mind shift then. It's, it's a, a perception, a false perception in the mind. And, of course, the, the number one perception is things like, my herniated disc and my stenosis and scoliosis are causing my back pain. That's a false perception. They are not causing it. Okay. And so that perception has to shift to see how it truly is. That's the one that Dr. Sarno shifted in the world. Oh, 
Okay, my brain is using those changes, the nor natural normal changes. And the other perception that I'm telling you to shift is the gratitude part. You know, from I want, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you. And so when you start to see it through that lens, all of a sudden the universe begins to pour this upon you because it thinks that's what you want more of is, you know, happiness, peace, joy, and things like that. When you're suffering and it's not going my way, it, it thinks you want more of that. It keeps giving you more of that. And so, you know, when you say what do you do, it's not about doing. It's about shifting awareness, shifting perception, things like that. Because the things that we do, and you see the quotes, <laughs> the things that we do, they're causing the problem to pro be prolonged. That's why the things aren't going away with trying to do things for limes and back pain. And why back pain became the number one epidemic in the world. Because they're doing things to try to treat the back. And the brain wants you to keep doing those things because it wants you to stay obsessed on the back. That's what it wants. It wants you to remain in an obsessed state, thinking, thinking, diverting your awareness. Okay? And so there's nothing to do here. There's nothing to do. And that's tough. That's tough because, you know, I, you don't make any money in this business. People come to me for help. There's nothing to do. <laughs> you know, it's, the money's made in the doing, doing, treating, doing, constantly doing, you know. And so, so you know, but it's, it's rewarding work. I love this work. I love it. Can you tell? See you smile. You smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a smile there. Um, and just for everyone watching, we're not, we're not paying Steve for smiling. It is those smiles are genuine. What? I'm sorry, I, I lift that I lift that to the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should have waited a little longer, buddy. Goodbye. <laughs> well maybe I can make up for it and you can talk a bit about your books. You've written three books. Uh, was the first one The Great Pain Deception? Yes, I have a copy right here. Yes. That that took ten years to write that. It's, and in the cover it's, you've got the yin and the yang. Yes, and you see the snake eating its own tail? Yeah. That's a your Boris, you know, like the medical industry, eating its own tail, causing the problem and solving it, causing the problem and solving it. And then the same thing with the mind. The mind creates the problem. Like the, the person asked earlier about trauma, the, you know, that's a memory now. It doesn't even exist. It happened at one point in a present moment. Yes. It's no longer there. It's just a memory. And mm. so the brain's looping that problem over and over and over, recreating it. Like the snake eating its own tail. And so that book, you know, it took 10 years of research. Now, I, I could be a very slow researcher. You know, maybe another person could have done it in six months. I don't know. But it took me 10 years. It's doing well out there. It's doing great out there. And uh, I wanted to honor the good doctor with a little top 10, his top 10 healing discoveries. Yes. It's just a little book. You know, just to thank him for saving my life because I was dead at that point. And so, yes, you know, if anybody wants to find the books, the, the Amazon, you know, all that stuff. Uh, you're, the <laughs> first, you're the first person I've talked to in China. It's pretty interesting, actually. Yeah, um, there's a few of us in China, a few people. I heard that. You know, I've, I've worked with people in Japan and Norway, Sweden, Italy, Ireland, you name it. Everybody in the world has TMS, every single person. Now, it's to different degrees. Some yes. people are d dying from it, and some people just have heartburn. You know, which is which is a stress symptom too. Right, right. Now, um, your first book that um, did that was that an award-winning book. It's, it's, you said it's, you've done this off-the-cuff comment of it's doing really well. So, but Thank it has you. been it has been um, awarded. Um, yeah, I, it was entered into the International Book Awards when it came out in two thousand eleven. Yes. It's actually two thousand twelve. It's entered, and it. There was 18 countries in that contest and a thousand people, Gosh. and it came in second place. Wow! In second place, wow. but they, they they would not they would not let me call it second place finish because I guess that's taboo in the book industry. You don't call it second place finish; you call it honoree. And I said, yes. okay, so I'm an honoree. Wow, but that's amazing! You got beat out by a book. A couple of medical doctors wrote a book on attention deficit disorder. Yes. I don't know. I started reading it and I couldn't hold my attention, so I didn't. Uh, I couldn't finish it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. It's true that it wasn't a, a attention thing, a book. I did not read it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and the um, the top ten healing discoveries that were from Dr. John Sardo. Uh, can you summarize what those discoveries 
were. I know we've touched on pretty much. Yeah, I, I can, I can, I can go to the table of contents. I, I did it basically as a thank you to him. Mm. You know, he, he passed on now, but he saved my life, and I'm forever indebted. I'm a messenger now. Yes. Um, you know, and it's it's hard to quantify, you know, things like this. And this is just from my my. 20 years of experience doing this work. This is what I believe are the, the, the top 10 order of things he discovered that changed the world forever. Yes. Okay. And the first one was number 10 was that most surgeries, almost all of them, let me rephrase that. Almost all surgeries are placebos. Wow. When you, and we know now because, because we know of certain things he discovered, how it's just shifting forms. Yes. Now you'll say, Oh, that new hip, my new hip feels better. It worked. That surgery worked. Yes. No, it didn't. Because now you, now you can't sleep at night. You have sleeplessness. Or now you've got tinnitus. Or now you've got your back pain. Or, or an ulcer. Things like that. Mm. It did not heal. It only shifted forms. Okay. God. Okay. Number nine. He, d he saw this thing that he called physicophobia. It's a, it's a phrase he coined. He said that these people, once they get these pains, they get all locked up and gridlocked. They're afraid to move and go live again. And you can never get over, if you're afraid of your body, if you're, if you're afraid of it, the physical phobia, right? Afraid of physical activity. And so he said, what, the most important thing you have to do if you're ever going to recover from chronic pain is to become physical again. All right, and that saved my life. And you reminded me of that when you said you, you, signed, you were conscripted into running in some type of race. That's what I started to run. And number... Eight was stop all forms of treatment. Yes. You have to stop doing whatever you're doing to heal because that's, the, that's perpetuating it. That's telling your deeper self, something's wrong with me. Okay? And it's also causing you to obsess and to think about the, the physical problem. And so it's, it's, you're playing right into your brain strategy of diversion. You have to right. stop trying to treat. Mm -hmm. And then number Number seven, the brain will sometimes use the malformations. I mentioned that earlier about the scoliosis and the stenosis, right? Yes. It will, it will attack your herniations and things like that and the arthritis in your ankle and that and the tears in the knees. It's not the cause, okay? Thank um, you. Then the rage to sooth ratio, I mentioned that a little bit earlier. He said, you know, these people might have a normal amount of anger and resentment and frustration and stress in their life given the life that they're living mm. and the personality type that they have. But they're not having anywhere near enough counterbalancing soothing on the other side. Okay. They, they, they just, they don't have fun anymore. You know, anyway, that was, that was huge. And then he said it was an emotional barometer. So when you're, like, when your sciatica began there, something's going on back here emotionally. It, the barometers hit a certain point, and you can, it, it's no longer able to divert it. So it has to increase the suffering over and over until you finally buy into the notion that something's wrong, okay? And then knowledge therapy. He said years ago, decades ago now, that knowledge therapy was the penicillin to this disorder. And then and the back pain's the number one example, right? It's the, it's the understanding of what's going on. That's the penicillin, knowledge, okay? But I have, to, I have to say one thing here, that knowledge can also get you locked up in into a loop where you can't get out of it, where you're constantly reading the TMS books and talking to TMS therapists and counselors. You're locked here. We have to move beyond the knowledge at some point into understanding. There's a big difference between learning and understanding. Okay. Okay. And uh, the number three, uh, tension is the cause of the pain in, the, in this world. Tension, not the physical body. Okay. Number two is it is a favor by your brain. And I know it's tough to understand that, but whenever we get these pains and illnesses, your brain's trying to help you here. It's not trying to punish you. It's trying everything that it can do to keep you from becoming aware of the emotional state that's frightening. Because for some reason, as human beings, we are more afraid of our emotions than we are of our physical body problems. Mm. And it, it, it chooses the physical pain over the emotional pain because the emotional is just too much. It's just too much, okay? And number one, drum roll, please. Can I have a drum roll here? <laughs> I have an applause instead. I haven't got any drums here available, but I had two hands. The number one 
and I mentioned it earlier, which the reason he should have won the Nobel Prize in medicine was what he called the symptom imperative phenomenon. That's not, that his number one discovery. We don't, you don't have a bad shoulder and a bad knee and a bad back and a bad hip and all these things, multiple problems. You have one problem, one. Okay. He discovered it. We call it TMS now. And it's, it's like the E equals MC squared of medicine. You know, Einstein's little short equation that put everything together, you know, well, the outer, he didn't put the, the, the quantum field together. They're still trying to put those two together, you know, through the, but he pulled, he basically found the solution to, or the cause of all of our health problems at one point. Now, there are some things we can't figure out, like Huntington's disease and Tay-Sachs disease that are mutating from generation to generation. That, I, I still believe that it has something to do with the, co the consciousness field, the matrix and things like that. But as far as TMS, uh, some of those things are unanswerable. But I can say this again to, to all four people that are listening, <laughs> that I've seen people heal from everything, everything. And, it's, and it's, it's different than a placebo effect. You know, a placebo effect is, they nor like he said, Dr. Sarno said, they're normally, they don't last. These things are more often permanent because you've gotten to the cause, you stop treating the effect, which is the symptom. Uh, hey, I summarized that book up. That's the first time I've summarized that book up. Well, you, you only made one mistake when you summarized. You went from 10 to 1. You're supposed to go from 1 to 10, but you're the expert and I'm in your shadow, so it's okay. Well, and you know, I sent him a copy of this book and I got a letter from him and I thought it made him mad. I thought it made him angry. <laughs> <laughs> I opened it up, and here, here was a nice thank you letter that's hanging oh. in my hallway. It's, it's in my hallway in a beautiful frame. He, said, thank you. He, was, he was almost 94 years old at the time. And the, the, the writing's real. real you know, it took me days to figure out what it said at some point, but it was really beautiful. A wow. beautiful letter. You know? I guess for the first time in his career, he practiced medicine for 50 years in, at NYU. And uh, for the first time ever, he probably saw his life work laid out in one small form. <laughs> he's, probably, he's probably thinking, well, maybe this is how they're going to remember me, you know? Maybe this is it. Oh, that's but really, this, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. It was, it was really beautiful. I had tears in my eyes reading it. It was beautiful, you know? Thank you. Yeah. Please, that I was representing him, he said. So gosh, gosh. And the last book you wrote um, that you've written, uh, Back Pain, specifically back for one pain. thing. Yes. Back pain, oh. permanent healing, understanding yes. the myths, lies, and confusion. Yes. Gosh. So, it, um, it's, argue, it's just a long argument about why the medical industry is wrong, why Dr. Sarno's right, and why nobody wants to heal. Very few people want to heal up, believe me. They may think they do, but if they really want to heal, they'll look at it, and they'll, they'll accept it. They'll give up trying so hard. They'll give up all of these wild things and they will just come to peace with themselves and it works it works yeah hey, really interesting questions come pouring in from amanda woodward um she has got a question about i won't mention amanda who it is for confidentiality but it's a 72 year old woman um she's had scoliosis most of her life although she's always been extremely fit um she is twisting to the left, collapsing on internal organs. She worked for 20 years as an addiction therapist. And the question is, is it possible that her expressed scoliosis twist is because of um, others' pain that she's taken in whilst she was helping them? Wow, well, I like that question. It's a tough one, isn't it? It's, it's yeah, I like it because... As Yogananda said when he wrote that great book, Autobiography of a Yogi, and he was a great healer, by the way. He healed quite a few people while he was in America. The mind creates this body, he said. Mind creates body. And so if something's going on there, I've seen people catch things. You know, and, and one of the best TMS doctors in the world, he's in New Jersey, his name's Paul Gwatz. He said, I, I've seen in my clinical practice that back pain is learned behavior. Learned behavior. It's not genetic. It's learned. And so it is possible. We, we're definitely caught in this consciousness matrix together, all human beings. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you, you know, it's called entanglement. It's called entanglement. 
And uh, I don't know if you noticed, a couple of years ago, they, they did that experiment on the international news. They took those two electrons or whatever, and they spun the one, and the other one spun. What was it, like 60 miles apart on those islands, I think it was? Einstein didn't like it, but it's, it's you know, he was wrong. <laughs> we, are, we are entangled as human beings. And so what affects one does affect another. Mm -hmm. I think it was Lao, Lao Tzu said that uh, a man who transforms himself transforms the world, you know, which is true. When I, when I heal, I shift and I pull everybody with me. We're all in this life together, you know, through the heart waves. And so it, it is possible, I know if I understood the question correctly, um, I heard the word scoliosis in there, but yes, I mean, and Andrew Weil mentions this, if your doctor doesn't believe you're going to heal, then you're probably not going to heal because there's something going on outside of our awareness between the two people. You know, that causes that, you know, and so I don't have all the answers on that end of it, but I like that's a pretty good question. Yes, to think, well, she's treating people that are unwell. Does that, does that do those energies then pass to this woman over a 20 year period? I guess with doctors, will they get, you know, also get illnesses from their patients? It's that's, the a, that's a good question, although I, I would imagine the more empathic you are the more you will take on that person. Okay. And I, I've, had, I've had people contact me that told me within the last couple of years, they stay in contact with me regularly, that they figured out how to erase the childhood trauma from the quantum field, from the quantum field. They, they can see the energy flow in this and yes. they can erase it and it doesn't return with no memory loss. And they're preparing a TED talk now, so I, I can't say much more about it. But ultimately, all healing will come down to energy healing, all of it, okay? All healing will. Now, we can do that in our minds if we're, if we're yogis, I suppose, or I did it to some level too. Um, or if we need help from the outside, which we often do, you know, in medicine, we need medicine. I'm not, I'm not saying get rid of medicine. I'm not saying, you know, doctors are all bad. I'm not saying that, okay? I'm just saying most of our problems are coming from them. But it's going to come down to energy healing. I've seen, I saw, I don't know if you have Gaia, but I saw that energy healing working with that woman who had that stroke and she lost 60% of this, her function and the heat, the heat was heating up. She was taking that on herself and I don't understand it. So I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, wander into a realm where I'm not an expert in, but uh, I do believe there's something going on between us. <laughs> not you and I personally. <laughs> no, I was just wondering why I let the cat out of the bag while we were on air. That's all. <laughs> well, that's just really remarkable, remarkable things you've, um, you've taught us. Hey, great questions too from both Facebook and on live. So thanks for that. Steve, thank you for coming to SAMA. Thank you for teaching us how we can overcome pain, how, we, how through open eyes, and being happy for the moment, we can eliminate pain. It's amazing. Well said. well said. Thank you for the opportunity. And I do uh, recommend people to uh, go on to Amazon, look for Steve Ozanich. Now, it is an unusual name, so it's spelled S-T-E-V-E. -E. It is weird, <laughs> and, isn't and, it? And the other one is O-Z-A-N-I-C-H, as you know. Yes. Right. Wonderful. Well, thank you for your time. It's now 10.30 at night in Steve time. So thank you very much for your contribution. I'm sure our viewers will thank you for, your, for all that you've taught them. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Have a great evening. And goodbye, everybody. Facebook, great to have you. And also online participants. Bye-bye. <laughs>